Hello and welcome to Jeremy's Retro Bar. I'm Jeremy and this is my Retro Bar. And this week I'm going to be making a Compact Desk Pro out of these two super nasty Compact Desk Pros that I got from Computer Reset. We're gonna be taking the good parts from each, combining them into one ultimately great working computer. But of course, first, we're gonna to need to make ourselves a drink. Since it has been crazy hot lately, we're gonna make a drink that is gonna cool us down. And what we're gonna be making is the classic pina colada. Cue the music. No, I don't have the rights to the music, but we'll just make one. So we're gonna start off with one ounce of white rum, three ounces of pineapple juice, one ounce of coconut milk, and then we're just gonna add some ice and blend it here in our blender. And there we have a pina colada. Cheers. Oh, that's good. <laughs> I think I put too much ice in this one. So if you make this half your ice, um, so it could be a little fruitier and milkier. But uh, other than that, this is excellent. Cheers. Let's uh, get to working on these desk pros. So here I have two Compact Desk Pro 386-25Es. And I picked these both up at Computer Reset and they were both in pretty nasty physical condition. Um, now, just as a spoiler alert, I did plug them in. They both work, they both function. Obviously bad hard drives. I haven't tested the floppy drives or anything. Um, and so what I'm mostly gonna be doing is finding the good parts on each, combining them into one, clean looking, nice looking machine. So it's gonna be about a lot of scrubbing, a lot of cleaning, and I'm probably gonna add some upgrades to it as well. But the main thing that I'm trying to accomplish with this video is I've never retrobrighted anything before. So this will be my first time attempting to retrobrite both this front panel and the back panel on this machine. And then also I'm gonna to attempt to um, restore this keyboard to the best I can. The keys here also are gonna need retrobrighted. So, um, brighted, brighting, anyway. <laughs> They're gonna need uh, lightened up a little bit. So anyway, I'm gonna attempt to do that and hopefully at the end of this, we're gonna have one really nice looking Compact Desk Pro 386-25E machine, uh, which uh, is gonna be awesome. So uh, let's get started. So here we are in the workshop and I'm just gonna start by taking apart the major pieces and then giving them a good clean. So we'll start by just removing the case cover. And then removing the back panel. Compact computers use T15 screws for almost everything. So you gotta make sure you have a T15 screw head if you wanna work on one of these machines. Now with case one out of the way, it's time to move on to case two. Um, case two has a worse front panel, but the metal and the back panel are not bent. So I will probably be mix and matching uh, those pieces. But as you can see here, these black spots are rubber feet from computers that were sitting on top of it in the warehouse at Computer Reset that melted over time and created this really gross goo sludge thing uh, that's very hard to remove. So we'll have to deal with that. So case two here is in much better condition. Uh, the metal isn't bent. Uh, it's no, not deformed along the back edge, but it does have this rust on the case itself. So I think it's gonna be easier to deal with the rust 
than it is to deal with the bending in the other frame. So I'm probably gonna use most of this computer and just swap out that front panel from the other computer. Now it's time to remove the front panel from the top of the case. And that's easily done here with, uh, looks like six T15 screws. Ugh, that black goo is just everywhere and it's sticky and gross. And I'll just go ahead and pull these stickers off while we've got it right here. Now it's time to remove the good front panel from case one. And now I clean. I'm starting off pretty non-abrasive and then going increasingly more abrasive. So Windex to start off. It certainly looks a little better, but unfortunately those marks are scratches in the paint. So let's try the other case and see if we can make it look a little cleaner. Ugh, okay. So for this one, I'm gonna start off using dish soap and water just because dish soap is pretty good at cutting grease and uh, it might help with these rubber feet that are melted, but not quite the same makeup, so. Maybe it won't. And of course, we'll just get these stickers out of the way and go back to more scrubbing. All right, back to these black spots. It looks like this is just pushing it around and <laughs> not really getting rid of it. It's thinning out, but clearly it's just pushing this goo over the rest of the case. So I'm gonna need to find something that's gonna get it off. I'm gonna use a spooger here to see how much I can scrape off and get this away. And the spooger is nice because it doesn't scratch the paint or really affect the metal. All right, now with all the excess gunk off, let's go ahead and try Goo Gone, since it is kind of a black goo. And that actually looks like it's working a little bit. Not perfect, but it's getting the majority of it off. Now it's time to give these plastic parts of the case a bath. Then use some goo gone. Finally, some IPA to get the really nasty stuff off. And I'll repeat the whole process for the back panel. Soap and water, then goo gone, and then IPA.
So unfortunately, after cleaning both metal top cases, I've determined that the scratches are just too many and I'm gonna have to attempt to paint it. Not my favorite solution, but I think I can uh, find something that might look pretty good. So as to not ruin anything, I decided to paint samples on the inside of one of the cases. And that way, once it dries, I can determine how it looks and how closely it matches the existing paint job. And you can see here, I tried six different colors and it looks like the one that wins is the Matte River Rock from Krylon. And since I'm no longer worried about removing paint, I'm gonna go ahead and scrub it down with some isopropyl alcohol just to try to get any last amount of gunk off before I put primer and paint on it. I'm gonna start by putting on two coats of primer. And I'll follow that up with several coats of paint. And there it is. The paint did a good job of covering up all the scratches and it's got a nice smooth even color and we can go ahead and take a look at it side by side with uh, the non painted one and you can see painted one's going to be a little bit darker and a little bit more beige. Now it's time to deal with this nasty, nasty keyboard. I'll just remove this cable, take these screws out, and separate the top from the bottom. And just like the plastic on the case, I'm going to wash this down with soap and water. And then follow it up with isopropyl alcohol. Looks like most of this was dirt because it actually looks surprisingly good just with that clean down, so I don't think I need to retrobrite this keyboard. The keyboard's keys, however, are a different story. Uh, I guess I need to pull each one of these out, clean it, get it ready for retro brightening. Retro brightening? Right, keys everybody in let's take a bath while they soak I'm gonna blow off this disgusting black plastic and get it taken apart and cleaned For the bottom of the keyboard, I'm going to first remove these rotten rubber feet and then go ahead and wash it down with water and of course scrub it down with IPA. Now in order to clean this black plastic, I'm going to have to remove the backing metal plate and the keyboard membrane and the control circuit board. The circuit board comes off with two screws and four plastic clips. This metal though is held in place by looks like 400,000 plastic clips. So it's just a matter of getting them all unclipped at the same time in order to get this off. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, that's unfortunate. Looks like there's going to be some rust I'm going to need to clean up off of this. So I'll go ahead and remove the keyboard membrane and set that aside for now. And then we're going to pull out the rubber dome keys. And now we've isolated this black plastic and we can throw it in the tub. But first we got to clean all the keys that are sitting in there right now. I guess I forgot to record my actual cleaning process, but what I did was went over each key with a rag and then went over the keys that were a little dirtier with uh, IPA on one of these little cotton pads. Now we can finally scrub down this black plastic using a rag and then going back over with a toothbrush. And while we're cleaning disgusting parts of computers, I might as well clean these keyboard domes as well. Now to deal with this keyboard membrane. In the past I've been a little bit too aggressive and destroyed some traces, so I'm just very lightly rubbing it with a, a wet paper towel. Then I'm going to go over it with some white vinegar to try to neutralize anything that was caused by the rust. And then go over it again with some water to make sure that we get rid of all the vinegar that would be left on the keyboard membrane. So for the metal, I'm also going to use white vinegar to neutralize the rust and see if I can get it to remove it. After a lot of scrubbing and very little effect, I decided it's best to let it soak for a while, so here we go. Let's pour in some white vinegar and come back in a couple of minutes. And as we can tell by that sweet clock wipe, it's about 30 minutes later and I can see that a lot of the rust has already just kind of fallen off. So I'm just going to scrub here to get any additional hangers on. And then we'll give it a good rinse to remove any of the vinegar left behind. So we have two final things that we need to take care of. One is I need to get everything out of the case so that I can get the metal and treat the rust that's on the front of the metal part of this case. And the other part is I need to get any other plastic bits so that I can throw it in with everything else for retro brighting. And both those things are going to require a complete teardown of the machine, so I might as well get started unscrewing. Luckily the rust is isolated to just a couple spots here on the front and here just on the bottom. Nothing too bad and the rest of it is in pretty good shape. It's not bent or anything so this is definitely the, the metal case that we're going to be using. And while we got it out I might as well clean this black goo off of the power supply just using some IPA and it comes right off. So in prepping the plastic, I'm just going to go ahead and clean off this front face plate using soapy water and IPA. So I'm also going to get the plastic off of the face plate, the drive door, and the eject button from both of the floppy drives. Yeah. 
So just like the metal in the keyboard, I'm gonna go ahead and soak the front of this case, the part that's rusted, in white vinegar. And uh, we'll let that sit for a little bit and come back to it. Once I remove these screws, I forgot to take out of the front. And that clock wipe lets us know time has passed, so we'll go ahead and take a look at this. And we can see it's done an okay job, and uh, we'll go ahead and use a brush and uh, try to scrub any additional rust off of this case. After a thorough rinsing and giving it time to dry, go ahead and hang up these two pieces of metal and I'm just going to apply a clear coat, a matte colored clear coat, just to prevent any more rust from forming. And now there is just one piece of plastic remaining before the retro brighting can begin, and that is the plastic power switch on the front of the power supply. I'm able to pry the wires off of the switch using a spooger and a screwdriver. I'm able to pry the switch out of the casing using the screwdriver. And being very careful, I use the screwdriver and the spooger to pry the little switch out from the black housing. So to retrobright, I'm using the technique that I'm pretty sure 8-bit guy came up with which is using 40 volume salon clear developer and water in a plastic tub. Then I'll just add all the plastic parts of the compact case and all the plastic parts from the switch, the floppy drives, and the keyboard keys. And I'll add some rocks to keep these submerged. And we wait while the sun does its work And unfortunately, we're also going to have to wait until next week to find out how everything turned out. This video was getting really long and I wanted to keep it to a decent length and I also wanted to make sure that it got out on time. So all will be revealed what is hidden under this blanket if you stay tuned till next week. Um, but in the meantime, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing and I'll see you then.